So Nikocado Avocado has 35 million views on this video so far, and I'm excited to watch it with you. So let's just, let's just jump into it, girls. Oh, loud. Two steps ahead. I am always two steps ahead. This has... I should say, I am not a fan of Nikocado Avocado. I've never actually seen one of his videos from beginning to end. I've never even really gone to his YouTube ch channel before. He's a meme to me. He's like funny to me, but he, he is, I don't know anything about this person, except that he's the guy who's fat on the internet and people are worried about his health. It has been the greatest social experiment for my entire life. It's alluring, it's compelling, it's gripping to observe all these unwell, disoriented beings roam the internet in search of stories, ideas, rivalries, where they feel encouraged and engaged, where they involve themselves with the stories and become a product of influence. Thirsty for a distraction from time unspent, spoiling their minds, yet stimulating them at the same time. It's brilliant, and it's dangerous. I feel as if I'm monitoring ants on an ant farm. One follows another. Is he like trying to be extra deep? Is that the is that the next thing? Like this feels a little bit like Yeah, just like does he think like he's super deep? Is that what's happening? Follows another, follows another. It's mesmerizing. It's spellbinding. All these little consumers, all of these lost and bored people people consuming anything that they're told to consume. This is the same monologue from a previous video by the same name from a few years ago. I did see a clip when he was like fat saying like I'm always two steps ahead, that type of thing. So I am the villain because I've made myself one. And you will continue. Like is this the joke? Like is this the way he's talking and everything? Is this the joke? Or is this like a character he's playing? If anyone, because I've never, I don't, like I said, I've only seen him as like the, the guy who like punches the car and he's like, whoa, <laughs> I only know him as the meme guy. So is this his normal voice? Doesn't he usually talk like very different? So is this, I can't tell if this is a joke, like the way he's talking. You to consume these stories about me year after year after year for as long as I tell the internet that I am the villain stories that permeate and linger and infect the minds of the ants influence the ants brainwash the ants you are the ants today i woke up from a very long dream and i also woke up having lost 250 pounds mm -hmm. off of my body nice by the way, a lot of people were like, oh, he's so healthy now. Um, I don't define healthiness by skinniness, so I'm going to be real with you. But also, I think artist brains might always want to have this fantasy. I mean, even part of my artist brain is like, oh, this is like cool. I love like with the internet, but not enough to actually do it, right? He kind of did it, and that's kind of exciting. Like, I think that part is fun. Like, I sent it to my brother right away because my brother and I share Nikocado avocado memes back and forth. And I was like, yo, he's been with us and it's so funny. And like, that's funny. I don't mind as like an artist, like if this was an artist thing, like we love it. Like it, as an artist move, we love it. But it like social experiment sort of implies like a morality thing. Like he's trying to show society that we're ants or something as if we didn't already know that about ourselves. Like we are literally all sheep, all of us. Like, I don't know why people can't get over that except their ego convinces them like, no, no, no. I know what's really going on. None of you know what's going on. We're all just pretending to, but I love that for you. So I don't know what he's doing, but this monologue, monotone, whatever his voice, his cancer, I don't like it. Yet just yesterday, people were calling me fat and sick and boring and irrelevant. Yeah, I, I kind of like the idea that he's like pranking the internet. I mean, that's always fun. But also, like, it was no one's business he was getting fed on camera anyways. Like, I don't think it's anyone's business that he kills himself via mukbangs. 
Like, did you hear about the girl whose stomach collapsed on her during a mukbang live stream and she died and she went to the hospital and then she died? It's not my business how people want to live and die until they want to get help. Then I think like we should offer resources to people. But I think like people have the right to live and die how they want. So the fact that people were so allegedly worried about his health was always annoying to me. That's what I know about Nikocado Avocado's enemies or like haters. It's like they're like, he's so unhealthy. And I'm like, who cares? You're unhealthy. Like, I don't know why anyone's out here pretending. I don't think it's real when people pretend that they care about people's health, which is probably why this is even funnier for him in some ways. But he's not being fun about it. He's being like super weird about it so far. And I haven't watched it. So I don't know. But he's not like if the, like I feel like I should have been funny. Like, got you, bitch. But it feels a little bit less funny now. I don't know. People. People are the most messed up creatures on the entire planet. And yet I've still managed to stay two steps ahead of everyone. I assume this is like a, a joke. Like, this is him performing for the camera to make it even more shareable the joke's on you <laughs> oh. oh mr noodle you're so cute oh you miss me so much i know it was a you know, though, good for him because 35 million views on this video, he made bank. Like, I think at the end of the day, I kind of will always love that. Do you know what I mean? I do kind of love that part. I hope he made a lot of money. Years separate or longer. <laughs> I know. How many years was it? How many years? Tell me. How many years were we separate for? Too many. Yeah. <laughs> I know my baby. I had no choice. I had no choice. Blah, 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 blah. He's gonna keep talking. We're back home. It was a long eight years, wasn't it? Eight years? It was a long eight years. And I didn't think that it would have gone this long, but it did. And it was like a bad- Like making content eight years? Or being dream. fat eight years? Like being fat eight years? Yeah, it was like a really bad dream that we were waiting for it to be over. And it's over. It was just a dream. Like he- I'm assuming he kind of got fat on purpose to bring in the views and then became fatter because it brought in more money. And then I, now he's telling us that he had always planned to get skinny again, which I feel like is, look, everyone makes decisions on how to get famous and how to make money and how to be popular. And everyone has like a reason why they do it. But also like, it's not that weird to think he would do this. Like people get fat for free every day in America. Y'all are getting literally morbidly obese for free. He just made so much money off of all of you. Do you know what I mean? So in some ways, like, he kind of is a smarter person than the average person because the average person is just literally getting fat for free. <laughs> like, at least he's making money. But he's weird. Like, I never watched his content. Again, I don't like mukbangs. But, like, this is a weird video, right? It's not just me. I've never watched him. So, like, this just feels very weird. Like, I don't like the, like, the way he talks is strange. It was just a dream, Mr. Noodle, wasn't it? Yeah, it feels like a bad dream. Oh yeah, and he was an OF content creator. Chat says he made a big bag from fetish content and got and got out, which is fine, but don't call it a social experiment. Um, I don't know if it is a social experiment. I think it's a funny prank more than a social experiment, like a gotcha to the internet, but it doesn't matter what he calls it, right? Like what the fuck is a social experiment? Like what do, what do these words even mean on the internet? I don't even know what social experiment means. Doesn't that mean he just set out to do something and then he wants to see the reaction? And then a prank would be like, oh, I'm going to do this and they won't know what's coming and then I'll go viral, right? Like, mm-mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't know. Um, but we woke up. We woke up. <laughs> yeah. We're so excited. We woke up. Yay! We woke up from the bad dream. And um, I'm back. And Mr. Noodle is back. And here we are. We're back home, should we do? And I know everybody like has conspiracy theories about him. Um, hold on, they have, nope. They have conspiracy theories about him being like, this is actually old content 
and he actually pre-recorded everything. And the actual twist is that this is him two years ago before he got fat. And everybody has like um like a conspiracy theory with it, which I just like, I don't personally care. Like I'm not invested. Like it just doesn't matter to me. But it, I mean, he is kind of winning the internet by proving that people are interested. In and out. Like, people are interested in sort of what he's doing with his time. So, okay, like, you know, you do you. This is Stephanie So. A lot of people wanted to know about her. I watched this, like, a little bit of this video. And honestly, bro, I was like, I was bored as f Four years ago, it's just like a drama video. There's another video where she says how Nick Avocado, Avocado manipulated all of us. I don't watch these people, so I don't know anything about them. But I'll be real with you. Content creators are drama. And I'm sick of all of them. And I'm about to block everybody on my friends list because all of y'all are too dramatic. Minus my favorites. All my favorites are not. But all of my other, if you're not one of my favorites, you're dramatic. And I was looking at the text messages she was sharing and stuff. And they're like, Nick Avocado is fake. And then I watched Nick's video. And Nick's like sharing voicemails. And they're all just talking about how, like, I don't know who raised you. You're so fake. And I'm like, I do not care. I don't care. Like, Brittany just does not care today. Okay. I don't care. But either way, I don't like, I don't know these people. So it's not like I can, I'm not going to go into some drama about like, is Nick Avocado Avocado a bad person? I don't care. If you think he's a bad person, don't watch him. I don't know who he is. I don't watch him. I know nothing about this man. Okay. What's interesting though, is regardless if he's a bad person or Stephanie's a bad person or she's the victim or I don't care. Okay. What's interesting is that he was able to pull this off because I think that is interesting, but only for about another day and then I'm not going to find it very interesting right Mikey membership for seven months says I'm the most favorite y'all can eat it you know Mikey I'm gonna let you live with that dream <laughs> but either way like thank you for the membership um thank you for being here you are one of my favorites what am I saying okay anyways it doesn't matter the point is I don't I can't get into Nekakava avocado, Avocado's bubble. Like, it matters. So we're just observing him as, like, a content creator who's decided to make content like this because I just don't know anything about Stephanie. I don't care. I don't care about Nekakava Avocado. Okay, so what do you guys think about the fact that he pulled off the experiment or the prank or whatever you want to call it? Kind of interesting. I don't get why people are hating on it, right? Like, you entertain the internet enough to go viral, that's what's interesting. Like, that's what people care about. It's like, oh my God, you went viral. And like, you're interesting. And like, oh, you you did a twist, right? Because like, how many people watch FouseyTube and think like he's never going to get better? They're giving up on him. They keep watching him in hopes he'll get better. But like, Nick Avocado, Avocado did the one thing that a lot of people struggle with, right? He got virality. He got, you know, in the mainstream or YouTube mainstream, he got skinny again, you know, probably through surgery. And I'm assuming um, some sort of weight loss drug or whatever. He said it took two years, you know. So there's a lot here that goes into it, right? You know, let's see. Chess says he's very calculated, which he, sh you know, if you're a virality YouTuber, if your job is to go viral, then you should be calculated, right? If your goal as a content creator is to stay in the news, then you should be very calculated, Mr. Beast, Nikocado, Avocado, like, yeah, that should be your goal. You know what I'm saying? I, that's why it doesn't bother me because I always put him in that category of like, he wants to go viral, right? Let's see, kind of just feels like Trisha desperate for fame no matter what. Okay, true. <laughs> Kwame uh, with the membership for 18 months says, no, Mikey, I'm the most favorite. I mean... 18 months memberships. Yo, that's crazy. I am honored. That's Mikey, you know, uh, let's see. Uh, Taylor says, Bird, have you seen the panda mask he wears side by side with Stephanie So's husband's mask? Yeah, I did. And see, I just don't care. And look, I'm going to be real with you guys. I'm going heavily into my peace era. And if I know anything about humans, they are drama. And I just on the back of finishing Julia Fox's memoir, which was horrendous, by the way, just like the, it was. It was a lot. I have to meditate on it. It was a lot. I'm going to have to meditate on it. People who seek fame, people who want to be a celebrity, people who seek like to fulfill their ego. I'm writing them all off this year. So I'm writing Trish off. I'm writing Nick Avocado Avocado. I'm writing off Julia Fox. Like anybody who's on that journey with peace and love, like, 
it, I need a cigarette. It is stressful how much these people are willing to do. Trisha, all of them, like it's too much, but also like you do you, it's not the game I want to play. So I think from observing it, I would just say that it, it feels too exhausting to know what every, what every, what game everybody is playing, but the, it is a game and I don't like it. Brittany personally, it exhausts me. Like it makes me feel so exhausted. Like when I put out my H3 Adam video, people were like, oh my God, Brittany, you're a cloud chaser because I didn't know if Adam was a cloud chaser and people got pretty mad at me. They, oh my God, I loved that video because like half people were mad at me for being too soft on Ethan and people were mad at me for being too hard on Adam and then vice versa. It was so funny. Anyways, um, I don't know if Adam's a cloud chaser, but they're like, then you're a cloud chaser. Cloud chaser means something in my bubble. Like in my community, words mean something to us. But I realize like these other communities, I don't know what that word means to them. But to be a cloud chaser is very different than being somebody who's good at their job and famous. Like Anderson Cooper isn't a cloud chaser because he's a famous journalist or like that he's famous on CNN, right? So clout chaser is very specific. And it's like, it's like that guy who did the uh, Nair butthole video. That's a cloud chaser, girl. Like people who like Julia Fox, like people who are always associating with people doing whatever it takes to like, you know, go up the ladder, but not off the merits of their own talents, but off the merit of just being seen with somebody else. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, which is different than networking, right? Like building your brand because of good networking is not the same as cloud chasing, and I don't know if people know, like these words kind of mean things, but also it's okay if your bubble sees them differently. K okay, membership for 14 months says I'm only level 14. Well, the competition begins, boys, okay? Taylor says the bubbles are boiling over. Adam versus H3 is so much inner bubble drama because of the overlap of their audiences. Oh, which makes so much sense, right? So then we have like a Nick Akato Avocado, and I don't know what game he's playing. I don't know what game Stephanie So is playing. I don't know what game any of these people are playing, but I want to stay 10 feet away from them all. I want to observe them, and I don't want to talk to any of them. Like the irony is like people who are pro Adam and anti Ethan were like, Brittany, Ethan's never going to hire you. He's not like, stop sucking his dick. Like he's never going to want to meet you. I don't want to, I don't want to. I am really moving forward to protect my peace, but like Ethan would not be a good collaborating person. Ethan would be a horrible person for me to collab with. He would write me off. He would think I was too critical of him. He wouldn't want to talk to me because like I would probably make him uncomfortable, right? Like the idea that I would want to talk to Ethan as if that's good for my brand, like that's the irony, just because they're more famous than you. That's like, yay. Like, would you want to talk to Kanye? Let's be real. If yay slides into your DMs, you ignore it. You do not answer yay's DMs. And that is what I am learning myself. Like all these people, and I'm trying to be so much better at it because I did naively, I think, interact with some people on the internet over the last couple of years where I'm like, oh, like, you are willing to do things I don't want to do in order to maintain status, which is fine from a bubbles perspective, but it feels like drama, 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 drama. Yes, Drake too. Drake slides into your DMs. You ignore it. You block. Okay. You block, you block, you block. And that's what's important. Ania, thank you so much for memberships. Nine months. Let's go. The baby's here, y'all. Wait, who's baby? Your baby? Wait, is there an actual baby? Congratulations. We love to see it. We love to hear it. Sending you a relaxing next six months, girl. Oh, my God. Let's go. The baby's here. Let's go. Member for nine months, the baby's here. Poetic. Po oh, the baby's here because you've been a member for nine months. I'm getting it. <laughs> I'm getting it. I got it. <laughs> okay, I got it. The baby's here. Yes. <laughs> okay, yes. No, Mikey. Mikey says, I don't know about Drake. He's hung. No, Mikey. No. Okay, you're too old for him anyways, girl. Mm -mm. Look, at the end of the day, and I think this is what's important, anyone can play whatever game they want. I just like, I want to recommend for all of us, especially for those of us who are genuinely trying to be good people. I mean this in the nicest way possible. Some people out here not trying to be good people, like they're trying to be good enough, but they will literally steal your grandma's credit card and max it out and then talk about being a good person. And maybe in your bubble, that's considered good. But girl, ma'am, sis, no. Okay, like stealing your grandma's credit card and maxing it out. Like, <laughs> no, okay, absolutely not. Okay, so here we go. 
Nick Avocado Avocado. Let's see if this video goes anywhere because I feel like it's not gonna go anywhere, but let's see. I love <laughs> spicy black bean noodles. And um, by the way, if you're new to my, well. Oh, no, no, no. I am too Arab for this. I'm so sorry. I, or too Middle Eastern or too germaphobic. I cannot let my animals eat from my plate. No, no, no. No animals on the table. No animals on the counter. Everything gets wiped down and no animals sharing my food. Like, no, 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 no. We are also very picky about what goes inside of Indiana. And like, we try very hard to give her only the best food because we don't want her have, no, no, no. Alice member for 13 months says, mine says one year, one month and one day. Ooh, that's a sign. Make a wish, girl. Make a wish. Ooh, yeah, ooh. I don't want to watch him eat this. So I'm going to forward until he says something interesting. Welcome to new. Okay, this is the second channel. This is my second channel, and I hope you consider subscribing because no. I don't even know if people like me. No. <laughs> or no, Habibi. No. Or if they want to hear from me. <laughs> I haven't made a video for like two years, and um, this is where I'm posting now on this channel, so I hope you consider subscribing if you want. I'm actually posting more next week, so yeah, that would mean a lot to me. Well, uh, shout out to a social experiment gone well. 35 million views, 7 million views on this video on his second channel. I hope he made a shit ton of money whiplashing the internet. Okay, whiplashing. Do you guys see my shoulder definition? You see my you see my shoulder definition right there? The pump I had yesterday was wild, bro. The pump, I was like walking around like fucking Vegeta. I was like, yo, these shoulders are shouldering. Anyways, shout out to Nick Cacado Avocado for whiplashing the internet, like I said, but that's about it. Man, what a bubble. Some of you asked me to watch this. You said I'd love to see it. Now, there was a lot of conspiracy theories, but do you guys have any questions or comments? Was there anything that we should explore? What do you guys, do you guys have any opinions? I mean, I just feel like everyone picks a game to play and he played a game and he, I think he won. Like, I think Nick Cacado Avocado was winning the game he was playing. You know what I mean? Like, I I don't think that's the issue. But what do you guys think? Any comments? I think he's uh, still in his relationship. I think he's still going to be fine. I don't I don't know. Like, I as far as I know, he's just going to keep doing what he was doing before. So let's see. Taylor says the game he was playing with himself and drama channels that for some reason still cover him. Well, I mean, that's interesting, too, is that he does kind of depend on people covering him. But at the same time, let's see, he does have sadness behind his eyes. I mean, to be honest with you, um, most content creators are going to be depressed or sad. And most people in the world are like depressed and sad right now. So I don't know that it's significant that Nick Akata, why do people want him to be happy? Maybe that's the question we should be asking is like, why did we think Nick Akato Avocado would be a happy person or like a joyful person? Do you know what I mean? Like, is there a reason we thought he would be healthy or like in a good place? You know, like I'm not concerned about him, but then I don't, I really, anything, same with any other content creator that I cover. It's like, meh, what are you going to do? Let me see. What was he trying to prove though this, uh, through this thought experiment exactly? I don't, I don't know. I don't know why he phrased it that way. I think he's just doing a prank, right? Like he's just doing a gotcha. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's all he said about it. I, I don't know. I think he's just like wowing people and then maintaining the views. I think he's just one of those viral content creators, which kind of makes sense, right? Now, if he ever wants to change his brand or be something else, like in some ways he's doing really well because he never actually has to be vulnerable with the internet. Like what if this is just a job to him? Do you guys know the content creator? He's a gym guy. He literally gets fat as fat as his clients and then he loses weight with them. I think that's crazy personally to put your body through that much stress, but like that's his whole brand. And some people love it. I can't watch it. I think it's gross. Like I think it's kind of gross to to force your body into different states too often. Like I don't like it, but some people think it's inspiring and it's really nice and the you know it's nice to see your coach go through the same struggles as you. I don't know. Everyone has their own relationship with what they're willing to do for a job, you know, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Kind of a boring story. I thought it was going to be more interesting, honestly. I guess what's interesting is how people reacted to him, but I loved it. I mean, I reacted the same way where I was like, oh, look at, look at Nikocado Avocado. That's kind of cool. And then I sent it to my brother. Then we laughed about it. And I went, okay, cool. And then that was it. Do you know what I mean? Was there much? Yeah, I'm not sure. Was there something more to this? Why were... I mean, it's just good news. Okay, here. I'll, okay, now that I'm brainstorming it with you. It's interesting. 
it is interesting. I don't, I don't know why people might not find it interesting. I found it interesting. I love uh, before and afters. I love extreme makeovers. So for me, I'm like, oh, interesting. Body modification is very interesting to my brain. So, okay, that part was interesting enough. Virality is interesting. I always love the things going viral. Um, I think what's interesting is that people are making money. I mean, I'm doing it right now. I am making money talking about his project. Like he is the content, right? Like when people can talk about you in order to bring in views, like you are the content. And that's what's so interesting about certain people on the internet. Like, you know, we're all the content to some part of the internet, but Nick Avocado, Avocado is truly the content for so many, con like he just made money for everybody. When he makes content, we all make money. And that is a very interesting position to be in, right? So that's interesting, okay? And I, th I think, yeah, I, I can't look at this as a non-YouTuber, so I don't know how it is to see it as a non-YouTuber, but from a YouTuber's perspective, like, yeah, that's interesting. What a decision to make to stay relevant and to make money. And he definitely made money. That's how he paid for those surgeries or whatever decision, he, whatever method he used to, you know, lose the weight. Also, I will say he's not going to be as funny now that he's not fat. I know a lot of people don't like that fatness equals funny, but I'll be real with you. I make my siblings laugh by like making my neck more fat. Like I just think like fatness is funny. It's like a funny. I don't know what it is. So he's not going to be as funny now that he's skinny. So maybe it's that. And I'm not saying being fat is funny. I'm saying you're funnier if you're fat, which is different. I've always dreamed of being a fat man. I just think everything they say is funnier. But that's just because like bodies are funny. It's, you know, it's kind of like being, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Who knows why my brain thinks that's funny. But he's not going to be as funny now. Let's see. Do you think this is a reflection of the viewer's thought process of self-image or redemption arc or just glutton uh, glut gluttonous uh, for the hate, shame of people watching? Uh, him, how we enjoy the eating and his fat journey. Um, how, wait, watching him enjoy the eating and his fat journey. I think it's all of it. Like, I, I definitely think there's gotta be like five different audiences that watch him. The audience that wants to shame him for being fat because they think they're healthy. The audience that pretends to care that he's sick and they wanna help him even though they're, they don't care about him. The audience that finds him funny because he's such a meme. The audience that like wants to eat along with him. You know, there's those people. So I think there's got to be so many reasons people watch Nikocado Avocado. And at least for me personally, I, I only like him as a meme person, but I don't know anything about him. I don't even know how old he is. I don't know where he lives. Yeah, he's a lol cow. Lol cows are fun for the memes, but they're not content creators who have audiences who love them. Like I've been thinking about this really deeply. Even lol cows that are relatively successful, you know, I think they do fall off eventually. Because they are still a lol cow. Like people watch them for the drama. People watch them because they're crazy. People watch them because it's like, I can't believe how crazy your life is. To be honest with you, Trisha kind of went from being a lol cow to stabilizing her status as a content creator sort of with her podcast. She's done really well rebranding herself. But Trisha, let's be real, became famous because she was Nikocado Avocado. She was Boogie. She was the lol cow. And I don't know why... That's even a question for anyone who came up with Trisha. Like, Trisha is a lol cow. So the fact that she was able to rebrand is amazing. And to be fair, it started with Frenemies, for sure. That was the beginning of the rebrand. But she turning her podcast into something successful is her saying, I'm no longer the lol cow. She even said to Leo Skeppy, like, I'm ready to, you know, build bridges. I'm ready not to be, like, a drama person. But it's hard, it's hard not to be, and it's also hard for her to always rebrand because no matter what, that will always be her story. You know, she'll that will always be her reputation. But I think she's doing a very good job at rebranding. Yeah, I think she'll, yeah, I think she's doing an exceptional job. See, Boogie is still a lol cow, will always be a lol cow. Trisha has been begging Nikocado to come on her podcast, so her lol cow is still there. Well, what is, why is having him on the podcast a lol cow move when that would just be a good podcast move? Right? Like, wouldn't you want him on your podcast even if you weren't a lol cow? What does that have to do with her being a lol cow? Can you explain it to me? Let's see. Um, Boogie's internet access should be taken away. God bless Boogie, you know. And honestly, like, Ethan, Ethan is kind of lol cow adjacent. Ethan has moments of being a lol cow and moments of not being one. But I will say in the next two to three years, if Ethan doesn't change, he'll be the, he'll be the official lol cow 
it, of the H3 podcast for sure. I think Ela keeps him grounded. I think being a dad keeps him grounded. I think for now he's pretty okay, though. I mean, obviously, like I said, Ethan would be a horrible person to collab with. Like he is not good for your brand unless you yes man him the whole time. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. But yeah, he he will be the next lol cow. And he was kind of a lol cow when he was fat in a way and like doing gross things on camera. But he might, yeah, he could turn into a big lol cow eventually if he doesn't get his shit together for sure, right? Let's see. I think Trisha will relapse and go back to drama, especially when she and Moses break up. I mean, God, well, first of all, not very optimistic of you. Not very optimistic of you. Let's hope they make it work and they have a healthy relationship, you know? Um, H3 wants on him on too. Of course, like why it would be good to have Nick Avocado Avocado on your show. He is the content, right? So true, Brit. I think the H3 fans see him as a lol cow with the crew that keeps his head screwed on straight. At least that's what I think. Yeah, I mean, I could see that, right? Let's see. I was a huge H3 fan, but your last videos on about how they do bad research. I watched their Nico Nico video and it's a train wreck. I can't watch them anymore. It's cringe city. I go off and on from H3. Like some days I really love it. And some days I'm just like, geez, the research is so bad. And that could just be my, look, I know sometimes people be like, Brittany never corrects herself. Brittany, I literally correct myself all the fucking time. You guys know, for those of you who are consistently watching the content, I'm always adding in like corrections, taking videos down. I really don't like getting things wrong because it feels like a lie, even though I'm not lying. And if you guys know, when you watch my streams, I'm going on a journey with you. I don't pre-watch a lot of my content. So, you know, some people came into my Adam video and only watched the first five minutes and got very mad at me, but some people watched till the end and they're like, oh, I'm so glad you warmed up to Adam at the end. But like, that's the problem is if you are so mad that somebody has a different opinion of you than the, on the internet, that like you need to leave a comment for them rather than just like not watching, that's okay. I mean, it's great for the algorithm, but like, I'm not that kind of consumer. Like if I'm watching somebody and I'm just not vibing with their content anymore, I just don't watch them. Or maybe I'll talk to you guys about it, but it's not a comment on them. Like, I don't think they're bad people because they disagree with me. But as a consumer, I don't need to be forced to listen to people that I think have bad research or bad content, right? Like, I think there's a difference there where people try to moralize the difference of opinion. Like, I can't believe you have this opinion. I don't care if you have this opinion. I just don't want to hear you say it. Do you know what I'm saying? And I think that people forget, like, content works differently with different kinds of content creators. But yeah, it is interesting, uh, the audiences you sort of build when you're like an H3H3. H3. You know, it is kind of interesting. I don't know. <sighs> Very weird internet bubble for sure. Okay, let's see. Uh, Maiden says, looking at the definition of a lol cow, I think Trisha isn't one because it means being made fun of without realizing that's why people engage with you. Let's see. But what uh, what was getting at is that she still orients to that certain type of drama and filmatory content that makes me wonder if what made her lol cow in the past isn't an issue under her new brand. Oh, um, yeah, maybe. I mean, the, you know, old high habits die hard type thing. I don't know. I don't know. She seems to be changed, but I don't know. Who knows, right? I don't, you can't know inside the mind of a person. Honestly, him ending the show and refusing to acknowledge Hassan after having a disagreement over Israel put a bad taste in my mouth as well. Didn't Hassan, I, I watch Hassan. It's, you know, political season. I don't, I watch Hassan's clips. I don't watch his streams, but I've been watching his clips. And as far as I know, him and Ethan are good, right? Like him and Ethan both speak well of each other all the time. So I'm a little confused, I guess. Like they both, every time I hear them talk about each other, it's always like in good taste. But things like this will end friendships that aren't very close, right? Like I'm a little confused, I guess, how people don't see that coming. Like, look, streamers aren't good friends. I don't know how to explain this to people time and time again. They are not close because you only know those people through a screen. Like people are not close, right? Like they maintain civility, but nobody is here like being vulnerable with each other 24 seven, unless they live together, unless they have that type of relationship, unless it's negotiated. I think people assume like Hassan and Ethan are very close when they're probably just like friends. And it's like very confusing to me. I actually, there was another controversy that happened on TikTok. Maybe we should cover it actually in the autism bubble. Did Moses really exist? No, please. Not right now. Okay the autism bubbles having a drama and you know i think something that got said 
about the drama is basically, you know, we only know each other through a screen. And I think that needs to be reminded, like everyone needs to remind themselves of that. How well do you really know this person? You know, like how well do you really know their their values? You know, because Ethan and, and Hassan are a great example of like, you don't know how strong your friendship is until shit hits the fan. But also, listen, politics is very personal to people. It's okay for them to not want to talk to you over it, but it's also okay, okay for you to be indifferent to it. You know, everybody's got to make a decision about what is the line in the sand for things to sort of end in a communication, in communication, right? I think this is like really important. Let's see, Chess says, do you think there will be a point with drama channels or niche T channels of oversaturation where they'll plateau or fizzle out if they aren't already? I mean, every channel will fizzle out probably and renew. But look, we've always had TMZ. We've always had drama. One of my favorite things I've ever learned about history is that the founding fathers would publish false narratives about each other to like cause drama for the other. Drama is human. Human is drama, you know? And so again, you make decisions to keep your peace, make decisions to protect yourself. But these people aren't bad. They're just, they don't understand you. They don't understand you, right? Like I... I love so many people for who they are, but I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> like when I talk to you, it feels like we're not on the same page. And it also feels like if I'm not on your same page, like we're not going to get along. Because listen to me when I say this, I am not usually the person who needs my friends to change. I don't ask people to change. It's like infamously what people do and do like about me and hate about me. I will never ask you to change. But if you need me to change how I talk about you or my opinion of you, and it's only because you feel like it's it's like there's like an accountability thing you're escaping, I'm not going to be for it. I'd rather just not be friends. Like we are all going to die. We are literally all going to rot in this earth in like 50 years. No offense. And with peace and love, I'm not going to lose sleep over you when you're mad because we have a difference of opinion and you can't get over it. Like get over it. If a difference of opinion is going to be the reason we're not talking, bye. With peace and love. Like I told my mom the other day, I'm so glad politics isn't going to be like going to come between our families because I have a family. And if politics is the reason we're not talking, like that's never going to be my reason not to talk to my parents. And my mom said, no, 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 of course not. I would never stop talking to my kids over politics. I was like, okay, then we're going to stay in contact. As long as you keep talking to me and you really want to talk to me and you're not going to cause a fight every time, I'll talk to you. But if every time we talk, you're going to be dramatic. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. And look, I get it. During the 2016 election, everybody was like cutting off their family. Right? I get it. Do what's good for your peace. But also, people have to understand that they also have their line. We all have our line in the sand of when we cut people off. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. You know, it is what it is. Okay. With that said, should we cover this TikTok drama? It's not drama. It's actually like, well, it's kind of, it's hard to say what is drama nowadays, really. Let's cover it because I think it will be interesting and it will help like facilitate this conversation further. Thank you.